Hi guys, I am uh, Dr. Divyani Puri and I am an MBBS and MD in the field of microbiology. I am currently working as a senior resident in the department of microbiology, MAMSI, Delhi. Um, so today we are going to talk about the antimicrobial susceptibility testing. So this topic is very important because it is very very high yielding when it comes to your NEET PG examinations and uh, I am going to try and make it as simple as possible. So antimicrobial susceptibility testing we will start with the definition. So as the name suggests antimicrobial susceptibility testing, antimicrobials are basically the drugs susceptibility here means that we are seeing the susceptibility of the drugs against a specific organism and we are testing in it in vitro in a specific test media which is most commonly the MHA or the Muller Hinton agar or broth okay so MHA this Muller Hilton agar or broth is a very very important question this can come as an MCQ as which media is used for antimicrobial susceptibility testing and your answer will be the Muller Hilton agar so why do we want to know the antimicrobial susceptibility testing of an uh, of a drug to a particular organism because we want to know the drug resistance patterns that means if an organism is there will the drug actually work against that organism so that is why we need to know this that if maybe that organism possesses some resistance genes so maybe the drug will not work on that organism that is why it is important to know that which drug will work on which organism then we it also it is important because it will help the clinicians to choose the appropriate drug that means uh, we know not every drug will work against uh, we know that not every drug will work against all the organisms that is why we need to uh, know the specific drug which will work for that specific organism. The other is uh, to help the clinicians switch over to a first line drug. So basically for all your organisms there are the first line drugs and then there are the second line drugs. So first line drugs are the ones which have a narrow spectrum. So if there are certain first line drugs that will just work against the gram positive organisms Second line drugs are those that maybe they will work for a broader category. They might work for a gram positive and as well as a gram negative. But if we have isolated an organism, we need to know the specific first line drug so that we can go for a narrow spectrum. And it will also avoid all the kind of multi-drug resistant organisms that we are seeing nowadays. The last point is to know the drug resistance patterns of a specific area against a specific organism. So this thing is known as an anti biogram this can also come as an mcq what is uh, uh, how do you know the drug resistance patterns of a specific area against a specific organism uh, so this is called as an antibiogram so what uh, we do here is suppose i'll give you an example suppose if you're residing in uh, a place near mulan azad so if a person is coming from there and we isolate a staph infection we might see that if the staph, uh, the uh, drug doxycycline is not working against that staph. But maybe if that some, you know, some other person is coming from some other area and the organism is the same, maybe staphylococcus, but we can see that maybe doxycycline is working. So these are uh, specific areas from which uh, we can, organ we can uh, isolate a specific organism and uh, it might be resistant or sensitive to that organism so we need to make an antibiogram of that area and it will help us to know that maybe you know in specific areas the drug resistance is more and the other areas it's less and vice versa so how do we do the antimicrobial susceptibility testing in our laboratory so there are different methods by which we can do this first being the diffusion method then the other one is the dilution method there is diffusion and dilution and then there are certain automated methods. So first I will start with the diffusion method. So in diffusion method uh, we have uh, mainly three types. First being the Kirby bore. I will explain the details later. Second being the Stokes and third being the direct method. So what is the basic principle of the diffusion method? 
so here uh, the basic principle is that once we have an isolated organism on a culture plate and we know it belongs to a specific organism we have identified it taking the example of staphylococcus again so we have that staphylococcus infection and now we want to know which drug will work on this so what we'll do is we'll take that organism and we will put it in a, a nutrient broth or like a, a peptone which will give the nutrition to that organism to grow we will take it to a colony count which is equal to 0.5 mcfarland so 0.5 mcfarland is basically the turbidity so 0.5 mcfarland is the turbidity that we require this is a standard that we use so once we have that what we'll do is we will take an mha plate which is your muller hit and agar we will take that plate and we will with the help of a swab we will uh, lawn culture with the help of a swab we will lawn culture that organism onto your uh, MHA media so after we have done that the next thing that we will do we know if it is staphylococcus we know the first line drugs so now what we'll do is we will apply your discs your antibiotic discs okay we will apply the antibiotic discs then next what we'll do is after we are done with that we will incubate the plate plate at 37 degrees celsius and we will do it for 16 to 18 hours so once we have incubated these plates at 16 to 18 uh, at uh, 37 degrees celsius for 16 to 18 hours uh, the drug will start diffusing the basic principle is that these drugs will start diffusing into the media and at a point where it will uh, the point closest to the drug will have the maximum drug concentration and as it goes away as it diffuses into the media the concentration starts decreasing okay and i also want to mention that the discs here that we use are made up of sorry the discs that we use are made up of Wattman paper number one so this is also an important MCQ. It's made of Wattman paper one. So uh, what will happen is once the drug starts diffusing, there will be an area where it will, where the concentration of the drug is decreasing, and there will be one area where the con or, uh, concentration of the organism will be higher than the concentration of drug, and we will see a zone there. So let's start with the Kirby board. So as you can see in this image. So these are the discs that we have placed of a specific drug. This is the lawn culture that I was talking about. Okay, this is the lawn culture. These are the discs. And do you see these, uh, these round circles? So this is the area of, or it is known as the zone of inhibition. That means uh, the area which is the gray colored here, here the organism is inhibited okay and beyond this area the organism is living so in the kirby board what we do is we place the discs maximum we can place is six and uh, we place it in a manner that we have five discs at the edge and one in the center Okay, this is the process of how we do a Kirby board testing. So uh, we place the discs and now we will see the zone of inhibition. So this is known this is known as the zone of inhibition. So the drug has inhibited the organism, the organism is dead here and beyond that point because the concentration is lower, maybe the concentration of the organism is higher, that is why the organism is able to live. So how do we measure in the Kirby board? So what we do is we measure this whole area including the area of the disc. So we will start from the one edge, include the area of the disc and we will measure this. So this will maybe come around 18 mm or maybe this will come around 20 mm. So for a specific drug, maybe let's see if it is a staphylococcal infection and we want to see the zone diameter of doxycycline. We will calculate this and maybe it's come out to be 18 mm. So now what do we do with this 18 mm? So uh, 
also how do we measure these zone diameters so we measure the zone diameters we can either use a scale the normal ruler that we have everywhere or the other thing we can use is a vernier caliper so you can adjust these dimensions and you can measure the whole diameter of the zone so uh, after we have done that there are certain clsi guidelines so clinical and laboratory uh, standards institute it is on at clsi clinical and laboratory standards institute which has given us over time it has uh, calculate uh, it has uh, collected a lot of uh, your control strains and they have told us that if yahan se yahan tak ka zone hai to isko hum sensitive bolenge if the zone is beyond this it is resistant if it's less than this it is sensitive you know this is how they have given us zones in mm so something like this this is what a clsi uh, looks like so suppose again if we talk about maybe uh, staphylococcus only here so this panel is look so it gives us the disc content which is in micrograms as it has told us that it's suppose if you're testing it for methicillin it is 5 micrograms if we do it for cefoxidin it is 30 and can you see an sir here the s is for sensitive i is for intermediate and r is for resistant okay so what i was talking about maybe taking an example of clindamycin so if the zone is between is more than 21 mm it is sensitive uh if it is between 15 to 20 it is intermediate and if it is less than 14 it is resistant so taking the above example again if the uh maybe we'll take the example of clinda only so if it is coming out to be 18 mm we go to the clsi and we'll see 18 mm falls between this so here the organism is intermediate to clindamycin so that is how we interpret the kirby bohr method okay this is kind of a diffusion method so the next thing that we'll come to is your stokes method this is not uh, commonly used nowadays nowadays uh, we only use kirby bohr but i'm still going to explain it to you because we can get questions from this so stokes method is also divided into two so there is stokes and then it was modified later to modified stokes modified stokes so in that stokes method what we were doing is we were preparing the inoculum as the same we were taking the organism putting it in peptone and uh, we were doing a lawn culture but here what was different was that we take an organ uh, we take a plate and we divide it into three sections okay in stokes method what we were doing is we were putting the control strains on the outer corner and a test strain in the center while as in modified strokes what we did is we divided the plate into 3 and we put the test at the periphery and control in the center theek hai and what we did is uh, we inoculate discs here here also we inoculate the disc at the junction of the control and the test strain so yahan pe bhi humne kya kiya humne lawn culture kiya of the test strain here and the test strain here and control ka humne control ka humne kiya lawn culture yahan pe and yahan pe so that was the only difference between stokes and modified stokes of where you are putting the test strain and where you are putting the control strain so let's look at this let's look at this so if for example uh so this is your stokes diffusion method as i was talking about your test strain is in the center and your control strains are at the periphery and in modified strokes they just put the control strain in the center and the test strain at the periphery and these are the discs that i was talking about which are placed at the junction of the uh test and the control strain again you will incubate it at 37 degrees celsius and for 16 to 18 hours next day when you will come the drugs would have diffused into the media the principle is the same so here also diffusion is happening and we are using discs 
so uh, here considering this also may be taking it as staphylococcus so here there is amikacin here is gentamicin cefoxetin and clindamycin okay so here we are taking the same strain but now how do we interpret this for this we don't really need the CLSIs so uh, the uh, literature suggests that if your test strain ka diameter is equal to the diameter of the control strain so test is equal to the diameter sorry test strain is equal to the control strain it is sensitive see it's easy because we just have to see it with the naked eye we don't really need you need to use a ruler to see and then go to the clsi guidelines and check from there so this is what sensitive is the other sensitive thing is when your test strain ka diameter is more than the control strain obviously the test is coming out to be more than the control strain so the drug is sensitive but then there is a third part which states that if the test strain is lesser than the control strain but the difference so if um, okay let me draw it here considering this is your test strain and this is your control strain so looking at it one will think that maybe this is resistant but no we have to check the difference in their diameters so if this difference is less than 3 mm we call it as sensitive got it so this difference so if maybe this whole thing was this whole thing was 20 mm and this diameter here is 17 mm or maybe like oh, 18 mm so this is less than 3 20 minus 18 2 mm so it is lesser so this drug is sensitive got it so what is so what is let me go back what is now the next thing we'll see is what to find out if the drug is intermediate so here intermediate let's assume this is what we'll talk about so if your control strain is bigger than your test strain so we assume that this would be resistance but no for it to be intermediate this area from the edge of the disc till the edge of the test if this is 2 mm and this area from the test till the control is 3 mm we call it as intermediate okay is less than 3 mm actually then we call it as intermediate so if your test from your disc to your test if the zone is has to be 2 mm and from your uh, test to your control is between 2 to 3 mm it is known as intermediate okay then what is resistant resistant is easy that if your test diameter is less than 2 mm so if your test your is less than 2 mm it is resistant so that is how we interpret it we don't need clsi but this was not a very uh, good method because it was very subjective that is why we don't use it anymore and we only use the kirby board only this is recommended nowadays we've already talked about the clsi i'm going to talk about the mic standards later uh, next we come to the dilution method so dilution we do in a liquid media but there is also an agar dilution okay so the first thing that i'm going to talk about is the broth broth dilution the broth one can also be uh, divided into two there is macro broth which is done in test tubes 
and then there is a micro broth which is done in your micro tighter plate i will show it to you later what micro tighter plate means and then your agar dilution is done in your agar we use the mhe agar only here for broth we use the muller hilton broth theek hai so there are two main definitions that you need to know what is an mic and what is an mbc so mic means minimum inhibitory concentration that means the minimum concentration of the drug at which an organism will be inhibited that is the minimum inhibitory concentration it's a, it's in the name itself there is something called as mbc which is your minimum bactericidal concentration that means the minimum concentration of a drug at which a bacteria will be killed so cidal means killing so minimum inhibitory organism will be inhibited but may be not fully killed but mbc means b means bactericidal minimum bactericidal concentration the minimum concentration of a drug at which a bacteria will be killed so coming to the macro broth dilution so here what we do is we take the test organism like we have a colony we will inoculate that in your test tubes and here we make doubling dilutions as you can see zero is for the growth control that means in this there is no drug concentration there is no drug then we have made dilutions 0.5 1 2 4 so these are the concentrations of the drugs and as you can see it is increasing here from zero it's gone we you can go on till 1000 or something but here we have taken it till 256 after we have and we will in, inoculate the same amount of test organism in these different different broths then we will incubate it at 37 degrees celsius for 16 to 18 hours and then next day what we'll see is so this green thing is the growth of the organism so the organism has grown till a certain point so from here this was the zero tube then 0.5 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 so on so we can see that the organism has grown till this point and after this we don't see any organism growth so this point at which we cannot see an organism growth or turbidity with your naked eye this is known as the mic so for this particular organism the mic so was i cut it from here the mic has come out to be 64 okay so that is your minimum inhibitory concentration but to know the bactericidal concentration that means if the bacteria is actually died or is just reduced in number what we do is we do an mbc so from here we have already taken the mic so from here what we do is we do subcultures on an agar medium so from this we will subculture it on this from the second tube we will subculture it on this then so on and so forth we will keep subculturing till however dilutions you have made after this we will incubate the plate and then we will see the next day if an organism has given growth or not so if suppose at 64 the organism has grown okay then at 128 also the organism has grown but at 256 there is no organism that means 256 has become your mbc that means at this concentration the bacteria was actually killed but at 64 it was only inhibited it was only inhibited but at 256 it is killed so this is a better indicator of knowing that if an organism is actually killed by an organism or only inhibited so this is your macro flood dilution which we do in test tubes and we can see the turbidity with naked eye 
the other method of doing it is in a micro titer plate so this is your micro titer plate that i was talking about okay so we do the same thing here also so this is your growth control because we can see some turbidity here this is your this is your broth control just plain broth no organism inoculated and from here till here they have suppose again 0.5 1 2 4 8 16 32 64 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 
but now when we have reached here this 9 is not growing okay so for sample number 9 your MIC becomes as 4 so this is how we calculate your MICs during using a a guard dilution okay advantage as I've told you that you can use different uh, samples at the same time so it is more efficient that way so another test of uh, <clears throat> test that we had I had initially mentioned was uh, diffusion plus dilution so this is called as an e-test or an epsilometer test so in this as we can see so this fox is actually for cefoxitin it is a drug that we used against staphylococci and to check if the drug is MRSA or if the sample sorry if the organism is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus if it is resistant or sensitive so here also we do a lawn culture like we have done in all other methods we have done a lawn culture and we have placed this strip so as you can see if you can see clearly in this strip we can see the concentrations of drugs suppose this is at one then it's increasing here and it is decreasing here so how it is a how is it a diffusion and a dilution method it's a diffusion method because as soon as we place the strip the drug starts diffusing out and this area will actually have the maximum concentration of the drug and as you go further it will be lesser so at some point where it is meeting at this point exactly is the intersection if you can see this intersection is where the drug concentration is meeting the organism right here the organisms are not being inhibited here the organisms are not being inhibited here they are being inhibited so here the MIC becomes 1.5 okay so this is actually a diffusion method but because the drug concentration in the strip is variable it's increasing above and decreasing below that is why that intersection that intersection that we can see here we calculate the MIC and not the other uh, drug that we were seeing we had to calculate and you know uh, to use a ruler and calculate the whole zone size we don't have to do that here we just find out the MIC using this type of test it is also useful because in here we have only used one but we can use multiple e-tests we can put it like this so what we only have to do lawn culture once and then we use different e-tests and we can for different different uh, drugs suppose this for cefoxitin, genta so we can also know the MICs of different drugs against one specific organism uh, then there are certain automated methods that I was talking about <clears throat> most common being the Vitek 2 systems this is also very very important question so what are the Vitek 2 systems I'll just show you an image so this image in itself can come as a question that identify this what is this you are, we will say it is a Vitek 2 compact system which is used for antibiotic sensitivity testing but this just doesn't do the antibiotic sensitivity testing there is one more advantage to using the Vitek 2 systems it also helps in the identification of the bacteria so it also identifies the bacteria it also tells us the AST pattern and it is also quick for identification it can tell us in six to eight hours versus your uh, manual ones where we take the organism we first subculture it and then from that we will put the sensitivity we have to put a lot of biochemical testing we have to do a lot of testing to finally figure out which organism it is here it is quick so for identification it can do it in six to eight hours and for AST approximately 12 to 18 hours it will tell you the antibiotic sensitivity pattern so how does it identify the bacteria uh, identify the bacteria it identifies the bacteria by using the biochemicals only so what we do in our lab is for one organism we maybe put like five to six or seven different biochemicals here we can use multiple it can even go up from 18 to 24 or even more so there is a small cassette and it is something like this and each section is one biochemical 
okay so these are all biochemicals and there is one strip like sorry a strip like this that is there so what we do is we in a small test tube we take the organism put it to 0.5 mcfarland so this suppose this is a test tube we take it to 0.5 mcfarland and then we immerse this there is a small uh, tube like structure of this there is a cassette and a small tube like structure and we immerse it in a bio uh, immerse it in this uh, uh, solution and we take that disc and as such put it in this first slot so this is a vitec 2 system we will put it in the first slot we will press this button inside it's it will just take the media and that whole uh, concentrate the whole uh, organism of that media will be sucked into from this tube and it will go into all these sections from this over time if the if that organism is sensitive to the uh, if the organism is utilizing that particular biochemical or if it is uh, not utilizing that particular biochemical over the span of six to eight hours it will tell us that okay this organism is staphylococcus based on these biochemicals once we have identified the organism, there is another method to know the AST and it is the same procedure. We again take a test tube. There is another cassette. But in this cassette, instead of the different biochemicals, there are different drugs. So once suppose we have identified that this is staphylococcus. So we know there are drug panels like doxy, cefoxetin, vancomycin, clindamycin, erythromycin. So again, in this liquid media, we will do, we will make a 0.5 McFarland of that bacteria. This whole media will be sucked into the tube and it will go into all these sections. So over the span of 12 to 18 hours, it will tell us that if this particular organism is sensitive to doxy, resistant to cefoxetin or intermediate to cefoxetin or vancomycin sensitive, so it will just tell us and we get a digital report and uh, we will get a digital report and we can just find out from that. So here also you can test at least 10 samples at one point of time. So there's a whole, there's a cassette in which you place these tubes and in which you place these cassette that goes into the slot number one. Then from that you transfer it to slot number two and the cassette is then released here and then internally some process is taking place which you don't need to know of the processes are taking place and over time over the span of 12 to 18 hours you'll know the AST and in 6 to 8 hours you will know the ID of that organism so this is the basic all the different mechanisms uh, of testing the organism so there are certain MCUs that we will now do so the first one being which is the ideal medium for the AST MHA, Muller, Hilton Agar, Nutrient Agar, Blood Agar, McConkie Agar. As we have already spoken about, it's the MHA, Muller, Hinton Agar. So it's important because uh, why only this media? Why not Nutrient Agar or Blood Agar or McConkie Agar? Because Muller, Hinton Agar is, it decreases the variability. That means if I test it on the same media again, it will again show me the same results. Okay, and while on the others it can be variable that is why we use muller hinton agar so that is your answer for the first question so in the second question in stokes diffusion method if the zone of inhibition of the test bacterium is smaller than 2 mm the bacteria is considered as so as we had spoken about if the test and your control and if this is less than 2 mm we had already spoken about that this will be resistant for it to be sensitive it had to be this zone sorry this zone had to be 3 mm or this had to be the test had to be more than the control sorry more than the control or equal to the control intermediate test to be equal to 2 and if the test is smaller than the control it should be between 2 to 3 mm at least and it can't be none of the above the last one being in which method of antibiotic testing the control strain is not inoculated on the same plate as the test strain. So in Stokes method, it's the diffusion method. In Stokes, we know that your 
we talked about stokes and modified stokes so in stokes method we know that uh, the uh, the test strain used to be in the center and the control strains on the periphery so yes the control strain is being inoculated on the same media in your modified strokes your test sorry your control used to be on the center and test on the sides so yes in modified strokes also the control is being inoculated on the same media right it can't be none of the above and your answer is kirby bore because in kirby bore we don't put the control we just into like a lawn culture and we inoculate discs on it okay so i think uh, we are done with this topic and uh, i hope you were able to take some notes from this so thank you